this video attempts to explain and demonstrate all of the um, ATO3 uh, safety and control systems. I've owned the ATO3 for over three months and uh, I have to say it's the best car I've ever owned. I don't say that lightly because I've had um, at least 20 cars over the 50 years that I've been driving. Um, everything from the Datsun 240Zs to the uh, BMWs to Mercedes um, and, it, and it really is good. However, having said that, there is an issue with the um, ad 3 and it's its software. Not that the software is not good because I think the software is brilliant. The control systems and the safety systems really are good. The problem is the user interface and the manual. The user interface is not intuitive and the manual isn't really a go-to manual. The manual is probably one that you need to study. So the problem with the non-intuitive interface is that because it's difficult to use, people don't use it. Or well, people complain that it's not very good. So what do I mean by intuitive? An intuitive software or software that's got a, an intuitive user interface, um, the user will find it very easy to use because it makes sense. The problem with a non-intuitive interface like the Addo 3 um, is it's difficult to use. It's difficult to use without knowing what to do. Um, so what you need to do to use a non-intuitive user interface is to learn how to use it. And that and that's what this video is all about. This video attempts to explain each of the uh, uh, control systems and safety systems. Once you learn how to use the uh, interface and user systems, the Addo 3 safety and control systems are very, very powerful and, and very good. So um, if you can take the time to, uh, to learn them, um, it's, uh, it, it's time well worth spent, time spent worthwhile, whatever you want to say. I do warn you, it's a fairly long one. It's almost 25 minutes. I, I try to keep my videos under 10, um, but there's a lot in this one. You probably notice I'm reading the script from here. I mean, how many how many how many cars have got a screen that you can read an a, a an Adobe read file um, while you're driving? Not many. The Addo 3 has many safety and control systems to assist in safe driving. These include the blind spot assistance system, the driving safety systems, the predictive emergency braking systems, the intelligent power braking systems, the cruise control systems, and the parking assistance systems. Yes, that's great. But what are they? And how do I use them? I have looked at the manual and looked in the system screen, or whatever it is called. And I have no idea. I love the car, but I find the systems and software confusing. We all do. This video is to assist in understanding the control and safety systems. So let's get started. The blind spot assist systems can be turned on and off from the center console, as seen here. They can be individually activated and deactivated from the control panel on, this, on the front screen. Firstly go to Car, go to um, DI Pilot, go to Active Safety, go to uh, Blind Spot Assist and you'll see the subcomponents, Blind Spot Detection, Door Open Warning, uh, Rear Collision Warning, um, the Safety Alert and the uh, Cross Braking. Let's look at detail of the blind spot detection alert system. It consists of um, five components, these being blind spot detection or lane change alert, door opening warning, rear collision warning, rear cross traffic alert and rear cross traffic braking. 
The first component we'll look at is the blind spot detection or lane change alert. This is not uh, to be confused with the uh, cruise control uh, lane control. You can activate it from the uh, computer screen by using the slide. And this is an example of, a, of the lane change alert. So driving along you see the triangle in the um, rear vision mirror. When there's a car in the blind spot and I put the blinker on, you'll see it flashes. The next component is the door opening warning. Um, it can be turned on or activated from the screen as well by using the slide. And here's a demonstration. Open the door. Please be careful of cars coming behind when opening the door. Please be careful of cars coming behind when opening the door. The next one is the rear collision warning uh, system. Um, you can activate that from the uh, center console, from the computer as well, um, with a slider. Um, so what it does is it, it alerts you with a sound if a car's going to crash into the back of you, basically. I'm not sure what you're supposed to do about it, um, but at least you know about it. The next component is the uh, rear cross traffic alert. This is an audible sound. Um, when, you, uh, when there's a vehicle crossing your path and you're reversing, um, so it does that, so it tells you um, so that you can stop. The rear traffic assist with braking. Um, if you don't adhere to the warning, the, the vehicle will stop you. It will brake suddenly. I've seen reports of people saying that they get sudden braking when they're reversing. Um, it's probably this system, and the reason could be that uh, the radar system itself, the radar needs to be tuned um, and it needs to be tuned by a professional. Um, it should come from the factory fully tuned but if you're getting false positives I suggest you um, you look at getting the radar retuned. The next uh, system is the predictive emergency braking and the predictive emergency um, alarm system. It can only be activated from the, um, all these systems can only be activated from the computer screen. Um, so we'll have a look at that. Okay, so we go to the car. <clears throat> we go to DI Pilot. DI Pilot. And we go to Active Safety. This is the predictive, uh, so they can turn this on and off. There are two components to this system. One is the predictive collision warning and the second one is the autonomous emergency braking. The predictive uh, collision warning has got three parts. One is a safety distance warning which simply tells you that um, the vehicle is too close. Um, the second one is a pre-warning when it uh, detects that the vehicle um, is going to have a collision or may have a collision. Um, and the emergency warning is when if the driver fails to respond to the um, pre-warning um, it will sound an alarm. The second one which is the autonomous emergency braking um, if the driver fails to respond to the emergency braking warning uh, the risk level increases and the system will apply the brakes. videos where this is actually happening the, br the drivers do not touch the brakes in this this is an example of a pedestrian at night during a turn. It's not perfect. Uh, to a bike, a cross bike, a bike. A rear end of a car, another scene from that.
disabling this system is probably not a wise move. Um, but if you do, it will turn itself back on when you um, start the car again. So it's only for the current ignition cycle. Um, while we're on the set, where we're um, looking at this, um, we'll, I will discuss the false positives. So some people are experiencing false positive alarms, and some people are experiencing false positive braking. So the false positive alarms um, is mainly reported during going through a roundabout, and I believe it's most likely um, a lane keeping. Um, alarm system which we'll discuss a bit later so that when you're going around the um, roundabout it thinks you're changing lanes uh, this will happen if you don't have your blinker on if you've got your blinker on to turn right as you get into the um, into the uh, roundabout and you put the blinker on to the left when you're about to go off I think you, I think the um, the uh, false positive alarms will go away if they don't, it could well be that the radar needs tuning, the front radar needs tuning, um, or it could even be uh, the camera, the uh, the camera in the front, um, is the contrast might not be right. Um, I suggest that if you are getting false positives and it's not going through a roundabout, um, and and it's not a result of um, you know not putting the blinker on, um, go back to the dealer. Uh, this shouldn't happen. The next uh, set of systems we'll look at will be the driving safety systems. Uh, the first part of the component of that we'll look at is the lane keeping system. It consists of uh, two components, a lane departure warning. This will give, send a, an audible alarm when you depart um, the uh, lane. And the lane keeping assist, this will actually, um, this is an action and it will prevent physically um, you from leaving the um, the lane. You can override it with a bit of force, uh, not a lot of force, but uh, just enough to let the system know that you want to stay there. Now this is a, an example of it. And this is another example. So to activate or deactivate the system, um, you go to the uh, computer system and you uh, select the car we go to di pilot and uh, let's have a look here it is so <clears throat> basically it's saying what i just previously said but it's over 60 kilometers an hour so there's two modes it um, there's a warning and a prevention um, it just wants you to confirm that um, so let's look at how you activate and deactivate um, you set the um, the preference as to whether you want uh, a prevention or whether you want warning. Um, the warning mode is either a sound or vibration or both. And then you can um, deactivate or reactivate by um, uh, toggling the switch here. And that turns it off. Um, there's probably a little bit of confusion because of the various names they use. So they've got um, lane support system in the manual it's called lane keeping system um, so uh, I understand if it gets confusing earlier in the video um, when we we're talking about the um, brake assistance um, system um, we spoke about the uh, false positives people were getting going through roundabout and I suggested that it had to do with the lane part departure warning um, so this is the system I was talking about um, so you can either use your blinker or um, you can turn this off and test it to see whether that's the issue that you're having. Uh, one last thing before we leave um, or depart lane departure warning. Uh, this is a totally different system to the intelligent cruise control. The intelligent cruise control lane uh, control keeps you in the centre of the lane. This stops you from leaving the lane. The next system we look at will be the uh, intelligent power braking system. There's two um, si subsystems, a brake pedal feel, which has got comfort and has got sports. Um, I honestly can't tell the difference. Um, I, I believe the sports a little bit harder, um, but it doesn't feel different to me. Comfort parking. 
um, the better term would be comfort stopping. So what it does is when it's turned on, you know when you put the brakes on, you come to a stop, you get that forward and then back on the suspension, a bit of a jerk, jerking thing. It happens like an Uber. Um, so that's what this stops. So to activate and deactivate, we go to the middle screen, we uh, press the car, we go to vehicle settings. So underneath steering mode, you've got uh, brake assist mode, you've got the brake and, uh, sorry, the uh, comfort and sport, which I honestly can't tell the difference. And then below that, you've got the um, comfort parking. You can turn it on and turn it off from here. Um, yeah, this is pretty effective actually. So let's see the comfort uh, stopping uh, in action. <coughs> okay, I've turned comfort parking um, off. So we'll see what. Ha so what's supposed to happen is uh, it comes to an abrupt, an abrupt stop. So let's see what happens. Yes, that was abrupt, so I turned the comfort parking back on. We go up to 40. Oh, much better. Okay, you win. Creep forward by removing the foot off the brake or by pushing the accelerator down. This is your choice. Push down, you put it into drive, put the foot on the brake. So now that's on. Take your foot off the brake, and now you don't go forward. Turn it off, take your foot off the brake, and you do go forward. So depending on how you, um, how you drive, as to whether you like to take your foot off the accelerator, so sorry, take your foot off the brake, and then control the forward motion just by your brake, as we are here. Or whether, if we turn it off, whether you want to take your foot off the brake and control your forward motion just with your accelerator. Does that make sense? So the next one we do is a bit crazy. It's um, the handbrake, the uh, the uh, parking brake, the emergency parking brake. So you can be moving along, you pull it on, and it stops, and it's quite violent. So we'll just take that off. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll move move along. So we'll move along, get a bit of speed up, and now put, put it on one, two, three. As you see, it's pretty violent. Don't like doing it actually. Um, even at slow speed. So <clears throat> let's discuss that just a bit further. Hang on, I'll just turn around here. So let's discuss that a little bit further. Um, So we'll see what the manual says. So we'll go to the car. So we go to files. Start again. So the control deceleration parking when the um, uh, EPB or the emergency parking brake is pulled. Um, the CT, the CDP function starts working. 
and the vehicle brakes at a constant acceleration at 4 Gs when you haven't touched the brakes. But if you have your foot on the brake until it's to, um, it will then be 0.8 of a um, a um, 0.8 of a, um, a G, so it stops. Now that 0.4 was very sudden. I mean, you saw, it was really sudden. 0.8 would be double that. So I really don't like like to see that. The other issue too with that was that when we um, when we um, when I pull that brake on, it um, it took about a second for it to work. But anyway, that's uh, another thing. So um, you probably know that there's a noise generator when you're going slow. Um, it can be annoying to some, but how you can change it is by going to um, vehicle settings, go to notification, um, and you'll see engine noise simulator, or engine sound simulator, dynamic and standard. Um, <clears throat> some people say you can turn it off. Um, let's see what... Um, Gavin's got to say from uh, from uh, Ecotricity NZ. He's always got something to say. I have it all. It seems too good to be true. Well, to find out, I drove the car around for a few more days to get a real feel for it and soon discovered it's not perfect, with the biggest annoyance being the obtrusive noise generator at low speed which can't be turned off, and you can only select between two droning options. This has caused some owners to unplug the speaker, which you should not do by opening the bonnet. Next, don't remove this large flat panel, which you shouldn't pop out by simply pressing up on the two plugs from underneath. This will reveal the noise generator, which you should not under any circumstances disconnect by simply pulling out the plug. Uh, I have another video as to how to, um, how to get uh, Google up on the screen. You can set a, a speed um, where you get a warning if it exceeds that speed. Oh, what's this? What is going on? So I've got an alert that's come up. I'm not sure what it is. Actually, I do know what it is. It was set up. So it's the speed thing. So I tell you how to fix that. So I say how to fix that. But I'll do that at the next set of traffic lights. It's quite strange because all you do is get a little triangle up there um, <clears throat> when you have this problem. It's easily fixed and it's um, it's not an issue. It's not a problem. So let's come up here to the traffic lights. So it's just telling me I'm over a preset speed. So which you don't want to go over. It's in um, vehicle settings under notification and speed warning. So speed warning's turned on. And it was on at 60, so I put it up to 100, 130. So now that little thing will come on when um, I do 130. Um, I'm not quite sure why they have that, but anyway. Okay, so traffic speed sign recognition. Um, the first thing we do is we go to the car. And then we go to DI Pilot, and there it is there. So let's have a look at that. So there's two um, things here. One is the, um, the bottom one is the intelligent speed limit information. So that changes the speed limit on, the, on your screen. I'm sure you've seen that. Um, <clears throat> so to turn it off, you press that. Obviously, to turn it on, you do that. Um, <clears throat> This one here, Intelligent Speed Limit Control, um, I'd talk more about this in my next video on um, 
um, advanced cruise control. But <clears throat> basically, if you if you're in cruise control and the um, sign changes or the speed changes, it puts up a little message on the screen, and uh, you can then set the set the speed to the speed limit. Um, you can't set the um, f from the start. You can't set the uh, cruise control to the current speed limit. This is just about changing. So <clears throat> I'm about to turn on to um, Hooker Boulevard. Hooker Boulevard is 70 kilometres now, and we're currently um, we're currently uh, showing 50. So we're coming up to the speed sign. Oh, Buster! Bingo! It changes to 70. Isn't that great? So I'm just going to go to an 80 speed um, uh, limit. Uh, I'm just going up to an 80 speed. So we're coming up to an 80 now. It's actually just as you go past it, if you watch. Bingo. It just changed. What I'd like to do now is talk about the brake cleaning system. There is a system um, that's built in that you can't turn off or, or, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and what it does is it wipes the brakes when they're wet. So what happens is when, uh, when it's raining and it detects the raining by, um, by the wipers being turned on, yeah, and the manual just talk about a rain sensor, but I, I find that strange because the um, the wipers won't automatically turn on, so I assume there is no sensor. But but anyway, uh, when the uh, wipers are on, the the brakes are gently applied regularly, um, <clears throat> such that they kept such they kept dry. Um, it's just something you should know that it does. Um, but uh, there you go. Driver safety systems that have no driver input. The first one, Vehicle Dynamic Control, VDC. If the vehicle swerves from the driver's normal lane, the VDC will correct the situation by engaging brakes to the corresponding wheels to help control skidding and maintain directional stability. Traction Control System, TCS. The TCS system prevents the wheels from skidding when accelerating and engages brake control to prevent free wheeling of drive wheels when necessary. TCS makes the vehicle easy to start to move, accelerate and climb when under adverse driving conditions. Hill Start, Hold Control, HHC. After the brake pedal is released, HHC maintains brake pressure for one second to prevent backward sliding. Hydraulic Brake Assist, HBA. When the brake pedal is pressed, quickly, HBA recognizes that the vehicle is in emergency mode and actively improves the brake pressure so that the ABS can intervene more quickly and effectively shorten the brake distance. I hope this video has been um, helpful to you. Um, you probably noticed that there was no information about the cruise control. Um, I have a video already on cruise control, a fairly elementary one, and I'm, I'm currently doing a, um, a more detailed uh, analysis of the cruise control um, because it really needs a, uh, a complete video for itself. Um, if you like this video and if you like this channel, please subscribe and um, any new uh, chapters that come out or any new videos that come out, uh, you'll be notified. Thank you.